I'm Van. I'm Sorry. That's Booby. And Kalfi and Chip. Also, we have some mugs. The Mugsy. Sorry secret mug. I don't know how clear that's coming in. And there's a Middle America mug. That's on the Teespring. It should be beneath the videos. Oh, what's in here? Something broken in there? No. Oh. There's a bunch of people. Well, yeah, something's broken. Of... Don't say what it is. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and also, we do this, where in the world is the village? So yes. this is, oh, uh, yes. who is this? This is Dalton, the big homie? Y yes. Uh, Dal I think it's a Dalton camp. Good. That, let's put his first and last name out there. Well, Dalton, also, get us your social security number no, as well. No, that's how he's on Twitter. Oh, okay. All right. And so Maybe that's not even his name. Here, Here's Dalton rocking out. ever go on Twitter and last night I couldn't sleep so I was like well I'll mess around on Twitter for a while see if I can you know why because for some reason Twitter confuses me so I was going on there and I was like scrolling through I figured out where like mentions go and then like I found that I was like oh my gosh he's wearing he's wearing the sorry shirt and he's playing this guitar <laughs> <laughs> yeah the so I always like those action shots when somebody's like rocking the yeah, shirt or something. Yeah. Or they're like an action. Yeah. This is very rock and roll. So yeah, I'm, I liked I'm pretty. It. I'm pretty proud. I'm pretty proud. <laughs> uh, this is Darn Week, ladies and gentlemen. And Darn Week is. A, it sounds like you're saying Darn Week. Darn. Darwin. Darn. Darwin Week is when we track the evolution of the of the some pretty iconic bands in metal. Yep. And. Um, so we've got the evolution of a couple new metal bands, classical yep. metal bands. We also have a black metal or black and death metal band. Mm -hmm. Behemoth is the one that we chose for obvious reasons. We're this is a this is a favorite of ours, and yes. and uh, Nurgle uh, retweeted or re Instagram yep. one will, of our. Uh, when you're watching this, it's because I'm on maternity leave and we recorded these prior. So Orion is right. born. We're just putting that out there. Behemoth band. Oh yeah, that's, that's <laughs> when I decided. That's when I decided. That's when it name. started coming into your head. I was like, no, I'm not naming my son after like some <laughs> band member. That's not happening. But then you you suckered me in by you know talking to me about the yeah you we, know we named the meaning son of thunder, son of fire, and um stuff. I was like, okay, and the Bible verses that you pulled into it. Yeah. I was like, you yeah. he yeah he knew what to say. Yeah, yeah. So shout out, <laughs> shout out to the big homie. This is actually so. This is a last track on he the plays, most recent. Orion record. plays the bass, right? Right. Yeah, he, he's the one with the, the yeah, ponytail. Yeah, 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 you yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little man crush. <laughs> That's my, I, I love that. Dude. I know you were like look at him the the way he was rocking it. So yeah, yeah. Um, so this is the last song on the last, yeah, really, if it wasn't for the channel, we wouldn't have the, the name of our child. Hmm? This is the last song on the most- We would have gone with Reza, like I wanted. We would have went with Reza, that's correct. Well, if we have a girl, we'll name her Reza. Um, this is the last track on the most recent record, and it's actually the bonus track off the Japanese pressing. So I know there's gonna be people that are gonna say, actually, we are the next one thousand years. Are the is the is the most recent song, but it's actually what about that? Oh, Pentagram Ignis. That's a that's an instrumental. Oh, oh, okay. I think that that show that we went to ended on that one. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So technically, Oh, Pentagram Ignis is the um, is the last song. Pentagram Ignis, I'm assuming, is like Oh, Fiery Pentagram or something like that. All right, let's oh, go. Okay, go.
kingdom is thine to inherit, till the high gods witness at length that man is the lord of his spirit. See, that's the sound I love. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's a lot different, a lot more... Uh, uh, it had some uniqueness to it, but it still had the darkness to it. It's yeah. got the aggressive sound to it. The way that he does his vocals is better because you can you can kind of hear... It's not like... Like, I still need the lyrics there. Like, I'm not sure I can oh, really like sure. get what he was saying without the lyrics. For sure. Um, but there, you know, he has the fluctuation in there of like the different stuff that he's saying. And I think that it would be really, really, <laughs> really, really fun to like do one of these screamy parts with him. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I know that we'll never in our lives you, get that opportunity. I don't know about that. You heard it here first. Sorry wants to get on stage with Behemoth and, and yell and scream and stuff. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I Without wouldn't. being pregnant, because I feel like you really need those tummy muscles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I would not be surprised if that happened. Not at all, especially for you. <laughs> Don't touch my girl though, Nurgal. Hmm? I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to uh, 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 put down my, uh, my uh, pacifism. Oh my gosh, babe. <laughs> I know you're doing that BJJ too, so whatever happens to you, happens to you, <laughs> big you're homie. Not BJJ. <laughs> Yeah, he's, well, he's, then he should be able to meet you. Yeah, nah, nah, <laughs> nah, you don't want to smoke with him. No, he doesn't even seem like that type of person that nah. would invade somebody's space anyway. Nah, nah. <laughs> but if he did, he'd have a problem. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you know, this is it, this is really really interesting because I don't know if you see this, but it talks about man being the lord of the earth, mm -hmm. lord of the sea. Lord, Lord of the, of the air, air and Lord of the Fire, which are the the oh, elements, the right? Elements, yeah. So um, those those are the elements, and then of course I agree with this. I agree that man should be the Lord of the Earth, of the sea, the air, and fire. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. Because right. God set the dominion mandate. He yeah. says, "Let let them have dominions over the fish of the air, the birds mm -hmm. of the fish of the air." <laughs> the birds of the air, the fish oh. of the sea, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. And so, um, see, this is this is to me like the ultimate misconception I think that Satanists have with Christian theology is they really believe that the that mankind is just supposed to be hunched over and and oh, uh, oh yeah you know just yeah. begging for scraps like they don't have an understanding of. Man was sent here as a vice regent. That God, it's portrayed right. as God is the the ruler of, in heaven, and that man is is to rule the earth mm -hmm. in in lieu of God being here. Right. And, yep. and and what it means to be in the image and likeness of God, and then that we're supposed to exercise dominion. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you exercise dominion, then you are the Lord. Right. So. We're supposed to be the lords of the air and, and fire and earth and all that. I believe that. Yeah. So, you know, and, and you know, to some degree we've done it, you know. If you jump mm -hmm. on a plane and all that, that has to do with mankind exercising dominion. Yeah. Is that we took the elements of the earth yep. and, 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 or, uh, and organized them in such a way as, as a to... too. Yeah. As to, as to harness, you know, nature and make it work for us. Mm -hmm. we're, we're... So it just seems to me that they... They conflate, you know, submission to God to be that you're you're supposed to crawl on the ground and all that. Yeah, that's not that's not the case. And the, the biblical portrayal of the human race is not, you know, an ape or an advanced ape. The biblical portrayal of the human race is that we are the representative. <laughs> that, that's of, your doctrine. That, that's your theology. <laughs> that's your that's your anthropology. <laughs> but the biblical doctrine is that we are crowned with glory and honor. We're representatives of God on the earth, and right. that the reason that we're supposed to be good to people like Nergal, who completely disagree with us, is because even if he disagrees with us, I'm supposed to engage him as if he was God on the earth, mm -hmm. because he's in the image of God. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm listening, and I'm like. Conquering life and Lord of the Year. I'm like, yes, yes, for sure. Right. Fearless I, yes. I agree. Well, fearless, oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> That's As a matter of fact, that is the most often repeated commandment is do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so I agree with you, Nergal. Uh, here's the funny thing, though. I do not agree with Aleister Crowley. See, this is the one Who thing. Who is I, that guy? He, he's you know the Satanic Bible and yeah. Philemon, all yep. that stuff. Like, oh, okay. a lot of, you know, like do what you want, you know, with love or whatever. That's that's Aleister Crowley from that Thelema thingamajiggy, and um, is a god to live in a dog. No, but mm -hmm. the higher star. That was a quote from Aleister Crowley, oh, okay. Thelema, etc. So this is actually a, a clip of Aleister Crowley. And what's interesting is that man is a lord of his spirit. That's the only one I disagree with. So you're, ma man should be the lord of the earth. Agree. Man should be the lord of the sea. Agree. Agree. Man should be lord of the air. Agree. Agree. Man should be lord of the fire. Agree. Agree. Man should be lord of his own spirit. Uh, disagree. Uh, <laughs> disagree. And so do you, because think about it. If we if we do have that type of power that we can rule the earth, the sea, and air and fire, if we have all that power, but there's nobody above us that we report to, then that would be a disaster. You you put that type of power in, in people's hands and say, oh, and by the way, you don't report to anybody. Mm -mm. That's a problem. It reminds me of that, remember that <laughs> documentary? where they took like a bunch of prisoners and they made some of them like right. the leaders over the other prisoners and it didn't take long before they were treating them like shit. Sadat. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And and that's also that was also really what I believe is going on in the garden. Which is God is saying, I'm giving you dominion over everything. Mm -hmm. So air, water, fire, earth, whatever, you have dominion over everything. But you can't have this tree so that you can know in spite of all your power mm -hmm. and in spite of all the things that you're supposed to do to exercise dominion in the world that you still report to somebody. Right. That's That was the point of the tree. Yeah. And what, what Satan was trying to do was say, nah, bro, you don't report to anybody. Mm -hmm. So go and have all this dominion with no accountability. And when you do that, the minute you take that deal, then you lose everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, that's, that's the message. So... Um, if if man is truly the lord of his own spirit, then we've got then we don't need government. We don't need prisons. Right. We need a prison for him. The lord of my own spirit. Well, you committed a crime. Well, says who? <laughs> right. <laughs> who are you? Oh, who are you? You are the lord of my spirit. <laughs> Sadat. Correct. If that that that's exactly the point. Like this is where I disagree with my Satanist friends. If God is not the lord of your own spirit, of your of the spirit of, of man, yeah. that means that man then becomes the lord of his own spirit. Right. And what he's going to do inevitably, history has shown us, is take his power and use it to oppress other image bearers of God. Right. Right. Facts. We've never seen, we've never seen that not play out that way in the real world. Right. It's never happened. And that's why, you know, that's always a big criticism I have for anarchists is, is like anarchy kind of has this idea of like self governance and we don't need, you know, they, they've kind of got it half right where it's like, well, you're a human just like I am. So who are you to tell me what to do? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like Noam Chomsky talking about like we need to make the people that are leaders in given communities validate their, le their, their authority. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a good sentiment, but if you do if you do not meld, you know what's interesting, a lot of people don't realize is that biblically in the Old Testament, they had a form of anarchy. Mm. Well, remember, when they were asking for a king, yep. they were asking for that type of authority structure, and mm -hmm. God said, that's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. So prior to that's them true. getting a king, they basically had an anarchist system right. where it was like, you know what's right. You know what the right thing to do is. You don't need a government, anybody telling you what to do. Yep. So the Israelites functioned without a real government mm -hmm. to yeah, some degree. True. And they 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 couldn't handle it. So they, they asked for a king to rule over them. And so if you won't submit to the authority of God, then you're going to ask for the authority of a man to rule over. Mm -hmm. Those are the facts. Because somebody has to be an authority and call the plays. So... It, it, so that's that's why that's my criticism of anarchy is that there's there's no organizing principle. There's no we've never seen in human history where people are able to function without without some form of government telling mm -hmm. them what to do and without figureheads of that government. And of right. course, in the biblical strategy, God basically says, "Okay, well, I'll just become one of them, <laughs> so that you know, I'll I'll be the I'll be the human king, but it's really a divine king." Mm -hmm. 
that that'll solve the problem because human <laughs> beings we just can't do it. <laughs> You're not getting it. You're not getting it. So that that's that's what people don't realize is that God was like fighting for anarchy. He was saying, yeah. no, you don't want this. You it's don't true. want this. You it's don't true. want yeah. this. And we were saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> we need it. It's weird we, because we they had it. come out of Egypt. Slavery. So and not. they were they were slaves. Like yes. so you had somebody above you and then he made you slaves. He killed your children. Right. He um you know, it's just crazy that like all that was going on. They had to work for like he worked them hard. Right. And right. then the minute they get out from underneath that, then they're like, well, we do like having someone above us. Well, I mean, Moses couldn't even get them to the promised land right. without them turning back. And see, that's right. the, that's what that's what people don't realize. It's it's like, it's not like the human spirit is fighting like mad to be free of human oppression. Right. And then God comes in and ruins it. It's right. actually the opposite way. Is that we would rather be ruled by other human beings than be ruled by God. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we, we create these economic and political and socioeconomic systems that end up with, with a guy or a group of guys at the top and the rest of us just serving them mm -hmm. instead of all of us looking at each other as equals and exercising dominion out in the world right. under the authority of God. Right. And here's the thing, even if you say, well, our God doesn't exist, fine, but that's even better for you if you follow what God says and you say there's no God, then there's no, but then you're completely and totally free. Mm -hmm. But unless there's something above us to, to call a play, then we're going to default to all of what you've seen in human history. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just think that, that you know, Satan's a, a very good propagandist because he's really convinced people that his way is the way yep. of freedom yep. and, 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 the, and the key to human liberation and that God's way is slavery. And the opening verses of the Bible demonstrate that the entire planet was made for us to rule. Right. Right. <laughs> so kudos to the devil for really convincing people that he's a humanist and that he's a representation. That's wild, he is God. a representation of human dignity and, 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 and progress. <laughs> when God's the one that, that came out and said, you guys are basically going to be gods on earth. Like if I, if I, if I went and, and explained like the, the pinnacle of, of what I believe biblical theology to be about, most people would call me a heretic. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Because if I really came out and told y'all what I actually truly believe, there'd be a lot of Christians that are really, really uncomfortable with what I actually totally believe. But mm -hmm. uh, suffice it to say that God is just like any other parent, and he wants his kids to, to reflect him and, and look like him and do a good job. Mm -hmm. And so um, he, he gave us all this and said, you guys, go, go run it. Mm -hmm. Do on this earth what I would do on the earth. And, create industry and, and advance and evolve and all this good stuff. Um, and I've said it a million times, I believe that God is proud of a lot of these musicians. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I believe that God is very, very present in a lot of these shows. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you necessarily have to play on God's team for God to delight in you. You know, it says in Proverbs 8, what yes. Jesus is talking about, he was delighting in the sons of Adam. Yep. And uh, a lot of them were not on his team. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's the thing is like, I, I, I agree with all this stuff, most mm -hmm. of it, you know, like, can you feel the heartbeat down the, the belly of Leviathan? The Leviathan is like this, this mythical creature that Yahweh does battle with mm -hmm. in the, in the old Testament and he, and he kills him. But Leviathan is an ancient Near Eastern sort of legendary figure who's, who's like, Wow, but I thought Leviathan was the one he also he made to play with them. Yeah, yeah, he, he yeah, yeah. Yahweh plays with Leviathan. Sometimes he plays with him. Sometimes he kills him in the in the song. Oh <laughs> but Leviathan is sort of like this this mm -hmm. beast that's that is in in opposition to the gods, mm -hmm. and so that's why he same thing with Behemoth. So that that's why he and you know Leviathan is mentioned obviously in in places that predate the Bible and mm -hmm. in books that predate the Bible. Leviathan is this real like crazy creature that no hero could crush. Mm -hmm. And so when the Psalms talk about God playing with Leviathan, it's like mocking him. Like, oh, all these other gods are afraid of Leviathan. Yahweh is like so much above mm -hmm. that that he kind of plays around with him. Mm -hmm. Like, 
It's not a problem to Yahweh. It might be a problem to your pagan weak ass gods. It's like but a tadpole. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he might, he might, you know, he might mess with your weak ass gods. But our God is just like playing games with Leviathan. So, mm -hmm. um, can you see the loving God in the dying flesh of His most beloved Son? Yes, yes, I can. <laughs> And and of course well, that is a crazy line because yeah when you're reading it like I'm seeing it from a Christian angle I'm like of course yeah but then I'm like wait that's not what you, that's not what they meant what's Nergal meant when he wrote that well, if it was Nur Nergal that wrote it well yeah I'm I'm, you know, I'm almost certain it's Nur Nergal it's supposed that wrote to it. make you think like yeah he's supposed to be this loving guy it's a but look he, Nergal. <sighs> I think he's very intrigued by Christianity. I mean, look at what he named the record. I loved you at your darkest. And then he's got a song entitled Romans 5.8. I know. Which I'm pretty sure is God demonstrates his love to us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's Romans 5. I'm, now I have to check it. But I'm, I'm almost certain that that's Romans 5.8. So mm -hmm. Nergal knows his stuff about Christian theology. That's for sure. And you know Romans five eight is not a it's not John three sixteen it's mm -hmm. not a yeah I got it good guess good guess Vincent <laughs> it, it, you know Romans five eight is not a like John three sixteen no it's verse not like one everybody. of the ones that people know right right so yeah you know do what you want with that but I I think I think Nergal is kind of secretly attracted to Christianity to some degree but. Can you see the love, loving God dying in the flesh of his most beloved son? Can you taste the gangrenous fruit of the forbidden tree so that man can become Lord of the sea? See, this is the crazy part. Is He's thinking that when he did that, he became... Sadat, correct. Yeah, but it's the opposite. It's, he already was. Right, you already were. Yeah. That's the... You know, when the devil was saying that God, God, you're not going to die. God knows that if you do this, you'll be like God. Right. He made you in his image, dummy! Right. Well, if You are already like God! And the thing is, if Eden really was the mountain of God, you know what I mean? Where right. The, where the, the gods resided or where like they came right. together to take counsel, yeah. like, they were in the perfect spot right there. They had to leave that Correct. spot because they were, you right. know. Right. But they didn't lose their position as to what they were, what they were supposed to accomplish. It's just they just couldn't hang out with the... Uh, the gods. With the gods, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Eden is presented as a mountain. You're not conducting yourself as a god. It's a mountain. <laughs> it was a mountain um, <coughs> paradise. Yeah. And of course, the, the crazy thing is, is that Jesus is presented as not just dying for our sins to save us from hell, but Jesus is presented as coming to restore the image of God so that we can take our rightful place in ruling the universe with mm -hmm. him. Yep. So it's 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 backwards. It's like we had the power, yeah. we lost it because we ate of the fruit, and Jesus came to restore, restore us it. back to our our ruling ways, which is why at the end of the Bible Jesus says that if you overcome, you will sit with me on my throne just right. like I overcame and sat on my father's throne. Mm -hmm. So the aim of Chris, the aim of the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation is to sit man on the throne of not just the earth but the entire universe. Yes. Like, <laughs> so it, it, it's like if if I looked at God as somebody who was just down to put man's nose in the dirt and all the rest of it, you know, if I thought that way, then sure I'd write stuff like this, but. You know, and I'm sure, you know, and, and and the funny thing is, is that that's, that's Satan. That's what the, his job is to put, you yes. know, is to put our nose in there. God's job is to exalt us and to crown us with glory and honor. That's, that's, that's what we see in the scripture. But Satan has people believe that just because God tells people to submit to him, that that means that you're supposed to be, mm -hmm. you know, your nose in the dirt and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not the case. It's simply to know that there is an infinite difference between the creator and the creation. Right. I am a creation. I am not the creator. That means I report to somebody. But because I am in the image of God, yeah, I'm going to walk around with my head held high and I'm mm -hmm. and every place that my foot touches is mine. <laughs> I believe that. He <laughs> does. And so uh, and because I believe that I'm going to inherit the earth. 
So I don't care. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons I don't care about anybody's opinion of me. And people get mad at you and they think you're arrogant and all that. It's, it's not that. It's just I have an understanding of who and what I am. Mm -hmm. So I don't care about you. Who are you? <laughs> you and I are equivalent, sir, ma'am. So I don't give a damn about your opinion. You shouldn't give a damn about mine. Was the guy that, that there was this guy that was going around and and uh, it's a pretty cool story. You can actually watch it on Vice. If I ever find the link, I'll actually include it. But it, it's it's one of my favorite stories of all time. It's a, and and you could tell that the narrator from Vice was like he he was so disgusted by this guy. But basically, it was a Vice guy to Liberia. Yeah. And if I find it, I'm gonna put it in the the link here. And it was this guy named General Butt Naked. And what used to happen was he used to go, he used to have these gang of child soldiers, and they always used to fight naked, so that's why he was called General Butt Naked. And the kids did? Him and the kids. But before he would go out to fight, he would sacrifice one of these kids. What? Yeah, he would sacrifice the kid and then drink their blood. Oh. And so right as he was about to go into one of these conflicts, um, he sees this vision of a man in a white, you know, in a in a white robe. Oh yes. And um, <clears throat> I think it's that one right there. He sees this man in a white robe. Look, see right there. The, this kid's eating somebody's heart. Are you serious? That, That's really real. Yeah, right there. And um, so he sees this man in a white robe, and the man says to him, "My son, why are you slaving?" That's right. I remember you telling me. And he responds by saying. I've never been a slave of anybody. He's like, I'm a, I'm a prince. Uh -huh. And the, and the, and the, the vision says back to him, you're right in saying that you're a prince, but you've been living as a slave. And he says, and then the person says, um, repent and live, or stay the same and die. And then he, he snapped out of it. And ever since then, he started following Jesus. It was a, it was a, you know, it's a pretty cool testimony. Jeez. But the point was was and this guy I mean he was known he was known as General Butt Naked he had this radical change and say what you want wow <laughs> he's a pre he's a traveling preacher now so he went from fighting naked killing people mm -hmm. sacrificing kids to overnight turning into a preacher <sighs> say what you want but my point is in that in that interaction where God said to him the said why are you slaving yeah and he says I've never been a slave of anyone I'm a prince and the vision doesn't say, you're not a prince, you're a disgusting, nasty, that's him right there. That's General Butt Naked. He doesn't say, you Ugh. disgusting, nasty, whatever. He says, no, you're right, you are a prince. <coughs> right. Which is, but you're, but you're living like a slave. Because right. Because there it is right there. I told you, General Butt Naked, there he is. Joshua Bleha, whatever his name is. I would drain the blood from an innocent child and drink it before going into battle. Hmm. Yeah. <coughs> That's so gross. Yeah. And and then, um, you know, so he has this crazy vision. But it's crazy because God said to him, you know, you're right. You're a prince. Yeah. It, and he was in the middle of that. Like, how does God, how, you can't get worse than that. Yeah. You can't get worse than that is, is drinking, something drinking some kid's blood, blood and, and then taking his brother and sister and going off and fighting him and turning him into a child soldier. And even in that moment, God is saying, yeah, you're still a prince. Mm -hmm. Which wow. is, I loved you at your darkest, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, but then he said, he said, basically the vision said to him, you know, repent and live or don't and die. Like, uh -huh. it's that simple. Yeah. Like, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. You keep wow, this shit up. Wow, that's crazy. Huh? So, yeah. Yeah, like, it's no joke, man. It's no joke. So... Um, <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure that this is this is a clip right here, but so we're gonna include it, and I'm looking for the actual timestamp for when he talks about like what happened to him. Um, but yeah, man, it's crazy stuff, and it's true. I believe that God does love us at our darkness, darkest, and mm -hmm. and oh yeah, He does look at all of us because butt naked was not on His team at the time. He there it is right there. It was in his dialect. To look back, I saw this man in lady, white lady, but the light radiated through that, through that man mm. was so bright and brighter than the sun. Mm. And then I thought I was not a slave because he said, my son, why are you slaving? Mm. I said, what? In this whole territory, 
I'm the king. I'm supposed to be a king. And he said, you rightly say you're supposed to be a king, but you're living like a slave. Mm -hmm. Those words were very hard words in my dialect. I said, I don't understand. Uh, what did he say? I mean, repent and live or refuse and die. Mm -hmm. And he vanished. And the light vanished. Mm -hmm. And I came up to myself and I was so confused. Now, to go for battle, I tried to signal the battle. My pistol got bust. I got so afraid and retreated from the front. Mm -hmm. I got a free for the first time. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a follow-up interview with this guy, and, and he, the narrator was like, all these people were accepting him, and they're celebrating him, and he's like, this is a guy that was killing, like, he had a very hard time with it. Yeah. Like, how could you celebrate this guy who's yeah. killed all these kids, and yeah. yada, 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 yada. Yeah. Like, he wasn't, he wasn't very impressed with him. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a radical change, and this guy was known throughout his entire you know oh, that's wild and, and 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 yeah he says that yeah of course you're supposed to be a king but you're living like a slave like that's the message yeah and that that's why i believe that he actually really did see god that that there was an angel or jesus himself mm -hmm. showed up to this guy yeah because it sounds like that because that is exactly how jesus would interact yeah. with somebody sure you're a king mm -hmm. you know like living living in sin doesn't free you it enslaves you mm -hmm. And, and it, it makes you lesser than what you were supposed to be. That's the thing. It's like, you know, this is where I diverge from my Satanist friends. Is I don't, sin doesn't represent freedom to me. I've talked to too many, I've talked to too many people addicted to drugs and, and other, and other, and other things that, to, to go, or, to go with the idea yeah. that sin equals freedom. Right. Sorry. Right. Not buying. Um, so anyway, um. Uh, lyrically, this is great. Rex Infernus, I'm, I'm assuming that that's... Rex is probably having to do with a king or a crown. <laughs> so, Antichrist, Born of Shadows, War on Mars. So he's... This guy is... So Nurgle is basically saying that the Antichrist is going to be the one that's going to... going to make it so that mankind can actually rule mm -hmm. the earth, sea, air, and the fire. And, um... Of course, we don't believe that. So, um... Good, great lyrics though. Can you taste the blood of Abel on the sacrificial knife? Whoo! Whoo! That's a good line. Mm -hmm. That's a good line. Then he said something. I once married to the Pecatrix divine. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Well, that word peca, like peccadillo, or uh, even come, come, is is rooted in Latin to like sexual. Um, promiscuity to some degree. So oh. he's, he's talking, the Pecatrix, I'm assuming, would be the female goddess of sexuality, basically. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, I'm assuming that that's Satan had sex with the divine sexual lady and then out comes, you know, the Antichrist. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely a big evolution for Behemoth, oh, for yeah. For sure. sure. But definitely big evolution. I like this version <laughs> of Behemoth much better. Me too. Because it's it's much more singular. Like it's more clear, mm -hmm. obvious, vocally, okay, that's Behemoth. And yeah. it's got a uniqueness to it. Lyrically, he's saying something that we need to hear. Yep. And whether you agree with it or not, it needs to be heard. Mm -hmm. So too bad it was only too bad it only went to the Japanese people. Well yeah. I, 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 <laughs> why would I, you I, do no that? Idea. Yeah, I have no idea why. So technically, lyrically, we are the next 1,000 years is supposed to be it, but but anyway, th this is it. Um, yeah, I, I like the song. It was good. Um, I love the vocals. I love what he did with his vocals, too. Like sometimes he went to a whisper, and sometimes mm -hmm. he went to the regular. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they definitely grew. They definitely evolved as a band. Not not as like drastic as Pantera, I don't think. No. But uh, they definitely definitely grew for sure. What do you yeah. give the song? Nine. This is a nine point five for me. I really enjoyed it. I really 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 enjoyed it. Nine point five. Good Behemoth song. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone. The rise of man in thy strength. The kingdom is thine to inherit, till the high gods witness at length that man is the lord of his spirit. <laughs> 